from Hollywood. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Now, Dollar, my name is Struhl. Struhl Bail Bond and Insurance Agency. State, federal, and immigration. All forms of surety bonds and insurance. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm sorry. I don't need any. No, no, no. That's not the point. I need you to the tune of saving me $50,000. How does that work? Uh, I made bond for two men that were subpoenaed for a federal investigation. They skipped out, and I've got to find them. Who's mixed up in this investigation? A fellow by the name of Jack Madigan is the big shot. You know him? I've read about him. Enough to advise you to give up. If he doesn't want him found, the chances are they won't be. Alive, anyway. No, no, no. It's, it's not as bad as that. Look, I came all the way from New York. This is worth a lot to me. Can't I talk to you about it? All right. Come up to my apartment. Maybe we can work out a deal. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, Hartford, Connecticut, to the Struhl Bail Bond and Insurance Agency in New York City. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Jack Madigan matter. Expense account item 1250, phone to New York for purposes of checking your reputation. I learned that you, Mr. Struhl, were by no means above reproach, but decided that if a federal court trusted your agency, I would at least hear you out when you arrived, which you did at 1 p.m. Dollar? Come on in, Mr. Stroll. Thank you. Thanks for sparing me your time. I'm in a mess. Sit down. You should have known better than to make bond for anybody that was going to testify against Jack Madigan. Well, there was nothing I could do about it. Well, who forced you into it? Madigan. I've done business with some of his friends before, so he came to me this time and said, will I do it? Well, the way he said it, there was nothing else I could do. Madigan stood the expense himself? Sure. He wanted them where he could get his hands on them and... Looks like he did. Or they took a run out. They didn't have to accept Bond. They could have stayed in protective custody if they were afraid of him. They had to if Madigan told them to. The point is they're gone. Unless I can prove they're dead or find them before they're due in court, I forfeit the $50,000. $25,000 apiece. I've got to do something. Why'd you come to me? I told you I've got to do something. Yeah, it's a federal problem. And you operate in New York, and New York has plenty of hungry private detectives, I hear, and a fair-sized herd of policemen. I'll tell you why I came to you. The New York cops are busy enough, and besides, to them, these witnesses are just two names on a long list of missing persons. And as for private dicks, I could never be sure that one wouldn't want to make a deal with Madigan and make more money not finding them than I'd be paying to find them. You get the point? What makes you think you can trust me? Well, you were mentioned by a fellow from one of the insurance companies I sell for. They tell me you're straight, except for padding your expense account here and there. Oh, that's slander. Who told you that? <laughs> Don't make any difference. What's a little padding? I want to hire you. Okay, Mr. Stroll, you've hired me. Great. Now, who are these missing witnesses? Uh, Nippy Bruno is one. Real name's Joe. The other is Max Krauss. I've got their addresses next to kin, what they look like, and so on. Yeah, here I got it all in this envelope here. Okay. Oh, there's one other thing. Yeah? I want a retainer. 2,500 bucks. What? What's that for? To pay for going to work for a man I don't quite trust. Well, about 2,500 bucks? That's pretty steep, eh? Well, you don't have to pay it. It's up to you. Yes, but... Well, I can't get it till tomorrow. Well, that'll be fine. A cashier's check. When I get it, I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> I didn't expect the check to arrive, but it did. Special messenger the next afternoon. Expense account item two, $12.50, transportation from Hartford to New York City. Expense account item three, $23.85, dinner and drinks for a Herald American reporter who was more familiar with Jack Madigan than I. His statement unclosed. A lot of things have been written and said about Madigan by a lot of people, including me. None of us really know anything about him, how much power he has, where he got it, what his private life is. If any. And these witnesses being missing isn't even news. People who've gotten in his way have been dropping out of sight for years. Jim Schwartz and Big Tom Green. There's 
Woody South, just to name a few. I'd keep that in mind if I were you. Expense account item four, 180, cab fare. That same address to an address on 79th. The apartment of Nippy Bruno's next of kin, a sister, stage name, Vivian Brown. Hello. Miss Vivian Brown in? Who shall I say is calling? My name is Dollar. Mr. Dollar? She doesn't know me. Tell her I have some news about her brother. Come in, please. This way, please. Miss Brown is dressing to go out. I'll ask if she'll see you. Miss Brown? Yes? What is it? Mr. Dollar is here to see you. He says he has news about your brother. Tell him to wait. I'll get a robe on. Shall I take your hat? Thanks. Please sit down. Miss Brown will be right out. Uh, what was your name? I didn't get it. Dollar, Johnny Dollar. What makes you think I'd be interested in any news about Brother Nippy? Well, the mention of him got me in here. My butler doesn't slam the door on anybody until I tell him to. What brought you here? I'm looking for your brother. Then you've definitely come to the wrong place. Why should you be looking for him? I'm being paid to. The man who put up $25,000 bond for him wants to know where he is. I don't get it. What bond? You don't wear innocence very well, Angel, but I'll go along with the gang. It's no gag, and I can do without your info. Your brother's due in court in two weeks to help the federal men investigate Jack Madigan. He seems to have dropped out of sight. Do you know where he is? No. I haven't seen much of him in the past few years. He doesn't approve of me, and I don't approve of him. Does that answer your question? It brings another one to mind. He seemed to think enough of you to use your name on his bond request papers. How about that? All right, Peeper. I was only trying to do it easy for you. Red. I heard it. You walked into something, Peeper. I usually do. But I'm glad to see you in character. That automatic makes more sense than that phony butler act did. Stand up. Better see if he's carrying anything, Vivian. Okay. Be a good boy now. Until you try to palm my wallet, I will. Well, it's all right. He's safe. You can sit down, Dollar. Ah. Well, what now? He should be here in 20 minutes. I'll go back to my room. Sure, go ahead. What's the rough stuff, Red? It hasn't been rough. But you don't know how close you came to getting your head blown off buzzing this door. It's liable to happen to the next one that does. Light yourself a smoke. We've got about 20 minutes to wait. So we waited 20 minutes. Vivian came back into the room in a low-cut number that was a good choice for her sullen brunette attractiveness. It made her look softer. But the few remarks she passed weren't only icy. They could have come from a longshoreman. I was waiting for her brother to come in. That would have made sense. What did come in made none at all. It was Jack Madigan. Hi, Jack. Come on in and see what found me. Well, what do you know about this? How are you, Jack? Fine, thanks. What are you doing with that pistol? We wanted to play it safe. Yeah, he's a detective of some kind. He was hired by that stool to find Nippy. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? What do you have to say for yourself, my boy? As a matter of fact, I'm speechless, Madigan. Oh? How's that? I thought I'd have to find you. I didn't expect you to find me, yet at least, and, and here. Mm-hmm. What's so strange about that? You and the sister of the missing witness? Huh. Maybe not so strange at that. Shut up! Keep your remarks to yourself, you two-bit yeah, yeah, heel. Yeah, yeah, you cool off. Go mix me a highball. And you put that gun away and go help her with the ice. If you say so, Jack. Of course I say so. Go on. I'm sorry, Jack. Uh, he's been needling me for half an hour. I ought to take her across my knee, waving that gun in your face. What for? Anybody knows you can't fire a gun in these apartment houses without causing a ruckus. Uh, what's your name? Dollar. 
And the man he stole hired you to find Nippy. Hmm? And the other man, Kraus. Well, I'll tell you what to do. You go back to Strule and tell him the boys are all right. Oh, let's not be childish, shall we? And what river are they all right? Now, see here, there's no need to take such a pessimistic view. I realize the press has given me a reputation for violence, but I don't deserve it. There's no reason for me to want to harm those boys. I'm not afraid of their testimony. I'm counting on them. Sure, sure. And straight testimony, no perjury this time. Why, I've already talked to those federal men... I'm cleaning the slate this time, telling everything, and let the chips fall where they may. What kind of stuff is this? <laughs> the truth. I'm tired. I've been at Swords Point with the police and my government long enough. I've been offered certain little leniencies, and I'm going to accept. It's been later than I thought for a long time. I'm through. You know, this is almost funny. I'm dead serious. You go back and tell that police coroner tout that the boys are all right. Where are they? I can't tell you that. I've got them undercover for their own good. Now, Dollar, don't go off half-cocked. A lot of heads are going to fall after the three of us have finished this federal catechism. If you think you're the only one looking for them, you must be a stranger in town. <laughs> you're trailing the pack. Well, if this is all I get from you, I've heard enough. You'll drop it? If I don't find them before you're due in court, I will. What do you want, son? Money. I got some, thanks. I don't like to hear that. I suppose it takes a lot of guts to be a hero, but it sure doesn't take much brains. Remember that. I can leave? Of course you can leave. Because I think you're going to talk this over with yourself and come up with an important decision. I did talk it over with myself, but not until I found a cab stand on the corner and turned around. A quarter of a block behind me, I could make out the figure of Red, the so-called butler. Expense account item five, twenty dollars, fare and tip to a driver who saw to it that our cab wasn't followed. When I felt reasonably safe, I gave him the address of the second missing man, Max Krause. I didn't know what I expected to find there, other than an empty flat with possibly a lead of some kind. There was a trace of light showing under the door. Come on in, Dollar. Red. I didn't expect a butler in a place like this. Come on in. Why didn't you use your head? Jack gave you a chance to. Maybe I should have. What are you doing here? I live here. Are you trying to tell me that you're Max Krause? I'm Max Krause. And now I've got to do something about you. Can you prove that you're Max Krause? Why should I have to prove it? Go ahead. Think what you want to. You've got brains. Reach up behind you and snap off the light. Don't make a play for the gun, Dollar. What are your plans? American wants you put away until after the investigation. Come on. This way. Back door's closed. You can tell Madigan for me that this isn't going to work. If I drop out of sight for two weeks, somebody's going to get on the trail. It leads right back to Madigan. This way. I got a car in a garage down the street. That's him. Get down! Oh, oh, he... uh... Max, let me see. Uh... Sure. Now, now you believe him. Let me get your coat. Get away. I, I hate your God. We'll return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Once a year, the community chest comes knocking at your door, seeking your help. Giving to this worthy cause eliminates many separate appeals, which would be more costly in money, time, and effort. So when you give, make sure you give enough to cover the many campaigns the community chest includes. Give generously. Give today. Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. When the 
windows in the buildings around me started slamming open, I left the scene of the killing and carried with me a whole new set of thoughts on the Jack Madigan matter. None of them were good, but the worst was the fact that the description I'd gotten of Max Krauss would in no way fit the dead man I now thought was Max Krauss. Expense account item six, cab fare to your address, Mr. Struhl. But it's 11 at night, Mr. Dunn. Never mind what time it is. Find a chair and sit in it before you land on the floor. What's got into you? Sit down. Who paid you to hire me? What, what did you say? Who did? Paid me to hire you? What kind of a question is that? Answer it. Well, nobody did. It was my investment. Who would protect it but me? What's the matter with you? Come here, look at this. Read it right there. What? I want to hear you. Max Krauss, age 34, 5'11", 170 pounds, swarthy complexion, black hair, black eyes. Well, well, all right, why didn't you give me a phony description? Phony? The Max Krauss I found had red hair and blue eyes. I don't get it, none of this. What are you talking about? Krauss is dead. He was killed because I didn't know who he was and drew him out into the open. When did this happen? It happened. I was picked up the minute I hit town and followed. Who else but you knew what train I was arriving on and the hotel where I was stopping? And now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't think you've got right to jump at these conclusions. I hired you in good faith. But if you don't like the job, then quit. Not for a while. I stand a good chance of being picked up for questioning on that killing. I don't like that. I want an out. I want to know how it happened. From here, it looks like you sold out to somebody and hired me to put the finger on Krauss. I don't like that either. Let me tell you something. If I was crazy enough to do a thing like that, I'd do it so nobody could prove I What did. about the phony description? It may have been a mistake. I don't know how it happened. I think we'd better find out. And let me know when you come up with a story. Johnny Dollar. Oh, where are you? Not far from your place. Is Madigan there? No. Where is he? I don't know. He got a phone call and left right afterwards. Was the call about Krauss? He wouldn't tell me. What about Max? He was killed. Oh, I knew it was something awful. I could tell by his face. I've been scared to death ever since he left, and I didn't know why. I'll call back later and see if he's in. Mr. Dollar, I have no right to ask this, but there's something I want to tell you. Could you come up? Can't you tell me over the phone? No, I... Won't you come up? You alone? Yes, I'm alone. Okay. I'll take a chance. It'll be about ten minutes. It was a five-minute walk. And I noticed that New York streets seemed to be quieter than usual. Inside the building, I walked the two flights up to save the noise my arrival would have created by way of the elevator. I listened a few minutes outside a door without hearing anything and took the plunge. I had the feeling you'd change your mind and not come. I almost did. Nobody here. When did Madigan say he'd be back? He didn't. He didn't say anything. I have a funny feeling about Krause's death. But except for my getting mixed up in this mess, it was more Madigan's fault than your fault than it was mine. Why didn't he tell me it was Kraus who was here? If he told me that, I probably would have believed the rest of his pitch. Oh, I don't know. Nobody really knows anything about Jack. Not even you? Nobody. You put three men on their way to federal court to sing and a few hundred wanting to stop him. The lid is going to blow. What do you want to tell me? I want... I want to tell you where my brother is. Huh? After what happened to Krauss, do you think that's wise? I have to say it. I'm in it, too. I think Jack knew these things were going to happen, even about you showing up. Knowing about it or planning it? I know it sounds impossible, but... I keep remembering things he said. About how he'd have the government men eaten out of his hand. He was bargaining for leniency. He told me, but why are you ratting on him? Because Jack doesn't care about anybody but himself. One of the threats to keep him from testifying was that I'd be kidnapped. Huh. If he'd known that Max would be killed, he'd have let him take me, too. You think he did know? He hadn't let Max out of his apartment for almost a month. 
Tonight he ordered him to go. I think he wants us killed. So it'll make it look that much more dangerous for him. Does it sound too crazy? Well, not exactly, but it's hard to prove. I know that. And I did a foolish thing after he left. I called my brother Nippy and told him all this. I don't know what he thought, but I, I tried to call him again, and I don't get any answer. Where is he? He's been staying with Jack. It's over on Lexington, Brighton Arms, apartment 302. That's cozy. How afraid of kidnapping are you? Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I can stand staying here and waiting. Where can I go? Get a coat. I'll put you in my hotel room. <laughs> Expense account item six, ten dollars. Tip to the hotel detective to see that she stayed in the room. Item seven, one twenty, cab fare to Jack Madigan's address. I dropped my taxi a half block down and walked the rest of the way. What slowed me was the sight of a couple of prowl cars parked in front of the building. And even at that time of night, a small group of them orbit in a scattered circle on the sidewalk. I saw the body, but didn't move close enough to recognize it. Hey, uh, what happened? Huh? Oh, a shooting. Anybody know who it is? Yeah, the whole country will in the morning. He was due for a big federal probe. That's Jack Madigan. Where were you, Fred? Taking in another of them westerns, I suppose. There was more shooting right here than the whole picture. Hey, uh, pardon me. Yeah? When did it happen, do you know? Ah, uh, not exactly. They've been here quite a while. Oh, about an hour, anyway. Can't find the medical examiner, and they can't do a thing about moving them till they do. Hey, Fred, wait till the editorial tomorrow night, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got back in a hurry. What's the matter? Your theory has just been riddled. Madigan's been killed. I don't believe... That's what the -the on-the-spot experts say. I was wrong about him. What about Nippy? I don't think your brother would have been there. Were they the same ones that shot Max? No. How do you know? Cars were parked solid at the curb, and Madigan was too close to them. He couldn't have been shot from the street like Max was. You think Nippy would go to your place? No, he wouldn't go there. That'd be the first place he'd look. The first place who'd look? I don't know why I said that. It... Yes, I do. You're thinking the same thing, aren't you? That I told him what I was afraid of and warned him. That crossed my mind. But I don't care who I can send in for Madigan's killing as long as I can go home. You seem to be the closest suspect. You're not serious. You've given yourself a motive. As far as I know, you were with him last. I wasn't. He left the apartment. If that's true, you've got nothing to worry about. What do you mean? What do you want me to do? Go with me and we'll both make a statement to the police. You think I'm afraid to, don't you? I don't know what to think about you. Yes, you do. Because you found me in a mess like this, you think I'm as rotten as everybody else. I haven't been. But now I will be to protect myself. How badly do you need protection? I know how the police are. They're just like you. They don't care either who they pull in for Jack's death. You tell me to go with you and make a statement. The police would love that. They'd love to count the whole thing off to jealousy or being afraid of Jack, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? Ah, you don't touch me. I don't care what they'd like. Well, they would. It'd be much better to take me than to be laughed at because a star witness was killed right under their noses. We can call them and find out. No. It's easier to be rotten. I'll give you my brother. He is at my place. How do you know? I talked to him on the phone. He said he'd wait there until he heard from me again. Okay. I'll go over there. But I want you to come with me. Why? Haven't I done enough? Why do I have to see him? Come on. I don't want to lose you in case Nippy isn't there. Give me the key. Vivian? Answer him. Yes, Nippy. It's going to work, Vivian. It's going to be a... Who is he? An insurance dick? That's right, Nippy. What are you doing here? 
Why'd you bring him, Pitt? He made me do it. I asked her to make a choice between giving herself up for Madigan's killing or giving me you. Nippy. Put the gun away, Nippy. You've done enough. Yeah. Is what he says true? He made me do it. He would have taken me to the police. You know what they would have done to me. But it's all right, Nippy. You can still work it out. Get away from me. She's wrong. You couldn't work it out. But you may do yourself some good by giving yourself up. Why did you do this, Vivian? Did you want to get rid of me, too? Oh, don't say that. You don't have what to let him... What are you going to do if you get rid of me? Who's going to take care of you? Who's going to find more Jack Madigans for you to play with? Nippy, don't. Who's going to do the job for you when you get fed up and afraid to tear yourself loose? You don't have to let him take you, Nippy. I know you could take care of it when he got here. Is she worth it, Nippy? There wouldn't be a chance to count me off to a gang killing. You don't have to be afraid of him. Yeah, I'm not. Then take him and get away. Not him. I'm afraid of you, Vivian. You're going with me. Stay away from her. Nippy, let go. And stop fighting. I wouldn't hurt you. You will. Go, on, Nippy. Let me go. Now watch it, Dollar. Don't try it. Let go. Let go. No. Vivian, get him. I should have let him take it. Give me the police. Where can I find... Oh, there you are, Struve. Ah, good morning, Mr. Dollar. I read about it in the paper. They're holding the girl? Yeah, as accessory. Uh, and I wouldn't advise you going her bail. No, I certainly won't. I've had trouble enough with this group. You know, you didn't make it easy for me with that phony description. Yeah, yeah, I know, that description. It was given to me by Madigan's boys. I should have checked it. But don't worry, a mistake like that won't happen again. None of your mistakes will happen to me again. Huh? You'll understand what I mean, Stroh, when you get my bill. Expense account item eight, same as item two. Item nine, miscellaneous, $2,500. Expense account total, $2,720. Remarks? I'm holding my retaining fee until this matter is settled. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien may soon be seen in the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Sidney Miller, John Daner, Clayton Post, Jeanette Nolan, and John McIntyre. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to join us next week at this time when we will again bring you Edmund O'Brien as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. How's for trying to sing it again tonight? $5,000 in cold hard cash and $10,000 in fine prizes are waiting for the CBS listener who can solve the Phantom Voice mystery. Dan Seymour will be on hand with those coast-to-coast phone calls, and Alan Dale, Eugenie Baird, Bob Howard, and the Riddlers will be making the music. And remember, there's many a fine prize for solving the tuneful little riddle song that lead to the Phantom Voice mystery. It's an hour of fun and music to entertain you and perhaps pay off. Every Saturday night on most of these same CBS stations, here, sing it again. And now stay tuned for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Hubble on Cassidy rides every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>